friends and welcome to Storytime. My name is Miss Maureen and today we are talking about manners. But first, let's sing our hello song. When we sing hello, we will salute. And when we sing friends, we'll take our two fingers and have them give each other a hug. Hello friends, hello friends, hello friends, it's time to say hello. Good job. Today we are talking about manners. Manners are really important because they help us to be kind and polite and in some cases even safe. By being kind and polite and safe, we are practicing being good neighbors, good friends. It feels good when you practice good manners. It feels good to be kind to other people, just like it feels good when people are kind to you. A good rule to remember is always treat other people the way you want to be treated. Let's learn a couple of words using American Sign Language to help us practice our good manners. There are some very important words when we're practicing good manners. Polite words that help us treat other people kindly. When you want something, is it a good idea to just grab it? Maybe take it out of someone's hand? No. Is it a good idea to scream, I want that, and stomp your feet? No. What's a polite way to ask for something? We use the word please. May I have that please? May I have a turn please? Please is a very important word. What letter does please start with? It makes a P, p sound. Please. Yes, please starts with the letter P. P is for please. P. To sign the word please, just take our flat hand, palm down on our chest, and circle. Just make a circle. Please. Can I have that? please. Good job. So after you ask for something using please, and let's say your friend does give you a turn with the toy. Do you just take it and go away and play? Hmm. That's not the most polite thing to do. There's a special phrase that we say to show people that we are grateful for what they have done, that we appreciate them and that their actions made us happy. What would those words be? Thank you. Yeah, when someone does something nice for you or shares with you or gives you a gift or a compliment, we say thank you. Thank you. This is how we sign thank you. We take our palm and we move it from our mouth forward, like we're blowing a kiss. Thank you. And make sure to smile. Good job. So now you can say please. You can say thank you. Those are both very important words. But there's one more I want to talk about. Because even though we try our hardest to be polite and kind and use our manners as much as we can, everybody has a slip up every now and then. We might forget to say please when we're asking for something, or we might not even ask for it, we might just take it. But there's a way to help make that better. When you realize that you're not acting with your manners, you're not being as kind as you can be, there's a special word we can use. Sorry. Sorry is a very important one, isn't it? everybody makes mistakes, but sorry is a way we can help show a person that we know we made a mistake and we don't want to do it again and we feel bad. What letter does sorry start with? It makes a s, -s sound. Sorry. 
yeah, sorry starts with the letter S. S is for sorry. S. To sign the word sorry, we take our fist, but with our thumb to the side, so our letter A, and put it on our chest and make a circle. Sorry. Sorry. Good. So you guys can sign please, you can sign thank you, and you can sign sorry. Before we go into our first book, let's sing our alphabet together. You can pat along at home, you can sing along with me, or you can sign along with me. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Now I know my ABCs. Next time won't you sing with me? Good job, friends. Our first book is called Be Polite and Kind. It's written by Sherry J. Miners. And these letters here at the end are very special. They show us that she has a master's degree in education. So she's been to school for a long time. And this book, it's nice because it goes over lots of different ways that we can be polite and kind every day to anyone that we meet. Be polite and kind. Be polite and kind. I talk with people every day. Good morning. Hello. Hi. Come look. My words can show others that they are important to me. I say please when I ask for something. May I please be next? And I say please when I ask for help. If I ask in a polite way, the person will probably want to help me. When someone says something nice or does something for me, I say, thank you. Thanks for the ride. I can notice all the kind things people do. Another time I say thank you is when someone gives me something. I smile and show I'm glad that the person thought about me. Thank you. If the person is somewhere else, I can send a note or say thank you on the phone. I can show that I appreciate the kind things others do. There are many times when I can help someone. If that person thanks me, I can smile and say, you're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. When I yawn, cough, or sneeze, I say, excuse me. The little boy is also being polite and having good manners by covering his mouth when he sneezes. Achoo! Excuse me. I also say excuse me when I do something that could bother someone. Excuse me? When I do something by accident, I say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I like to say kind things. I can notice when someone is friendly or helpful or does a good job. Wow! I can think before I say something. I can be polite and kind when I say what I think and feel. No thank you. I know
no polite things to say. When I use words to help someone feel good, I show respect. Some of the polite words are please, I'm sorry, thank you, good luck, I like it, excuse me, may I, you're welcome. When I speak polite words in a kind way, people enjoy being around me. It helps us get along. I want people to treat me with respect, so that's how I treat them. The end. And look, there's some signs here in the back as well. Some that we didn't learn. Like yes and no, and you're welcome. Lots of good activities in the back of the book here. And of course you can find this in the library. For our felt board activity today, I'm going to tell you another story. This story is based off of the book called Please Mr. Panda by Steve Antony. We do have it in the library. I don't have it here to show you today because one of our friends saw it on Facebook Live and really wanted to take it home, which we love. And just a quick reminder that all the books that I read are available in the library. So if you like one of the books that I read and you want to take it home to explore by yourself, they're all here for you. This is Mr. Panda. He has just baked a whole bunch of delicious donuts. and He wants to share them with others. So he's going to go see who he can find to share his donuts with. Who's this? It's Penguin. Mr. Panda says, would you like a donut? Give me the pink one. Mr. Panda replies, no, you cannot have a donut. I have changed my mind. Aww. Oh, now who does Mr. Panda see? It's skunk. Mr. Panda asks, Would you like a donut? I want the blue one and the green one. Mr. Panda replies, No, you cannot have a donut. I have changed my mind. Aww. Huh. Why is Mr. Panda changing his mind? I don't know what's going on. Hmm. Ooh. Who does Mr. Panda see next? Do you know this animal? It's ostrich. Mr. Panda asks, Would you like a donut? No, go away. Well, that just is not polite. What's a better way to say that if ostrich didn't want a donut? Maybe... No, thank you. Yeah, that's much better. Hmm. Ooh. Who does Mr. Panda see next? Whale. Mr. Panda asks, Would you like a donut? I want them all. Then bring me more. Mr. Panda replies, No, you cannot have a donut. I changed my mind. Oh. Huh. Mr. Panda asks, Would anyone else like a donut? Oh, hi. <gasps> Who's this? That's a lemur. May I have a donut? Please, Mr. Panda. <gasps> oh, please. Someone else said please. Mr. Panda replies, yes, you may have them all. Thank you, Mr. Panda. I love donuts. Mr. Panda says, you are welcome. I do not like donuts. The end. So why did Mr. Panda give lemur all the donuts and none of the other animals any donuts. Because Lemur was the only one that used his manners. He was the only one that was polite. 
all the other animals were either rudely dismissive, like ostrich, telling panda to go away, or they demanded that he give them a certain one without saying please, or they demanded that they wanted all of them and they wanted panda to give them more. That's not polite. When someone's offering you something, just to be kind, you say thank you or no thank you. It's really easy. And maybe you get lucky and get all the donuts. Let's sing a quick little rhyme called Thank You. And for this one, we're just gonna stand up. Okay, so this one's short and sweet, but it'll get us just moving just a little bit before our next book. Our movements are gonna be clapping tapping with our foot, turning around, and bowing. So let's put those together. My hands say thank you with a clap, clap, clap. My feet say thank you with a tap, tap, tap. time now that you've seen the movements in action. My hands say thank you with a clap, clap, clap. My feet say thank you with a tap, tap, tap. Clap, clap, clap. Tap, tap, tap. Turn around. And with a bow, I say thank you now. Good job! Our next book is called The Bad Seed by Jory John. And this is a story of a bad seed. He's bad. He has no manners and he's not polite. He's quite rude. And he's not very kind either. But maybe he can change his ways. Maybe this bad seed isn't so bad after all. The Bad Seed. The Bad Seed. I'm a bad seed. A bad seed. Oh yeah, it's true. The other seeds, they look at me and they say, that seed is so bad. When they think I'm not listening, they mumble, there goes a bad seed. But I can hear them. I have good hearing for a seed. How bad am I? You really want to know? Well, I never put things back where they belong. I'm late to everything. I tell long jokes with no punchlines. I never wash my hands or my feet. I lie about pointless stuff. I cut in line every time. I stare at everybody. I glare at everybody. I finish everybody's sentences and I never listen. And I do lots of other bad things too. Know why? Because I'm a bad seed. A bad seed. I just can't help it. Sure, I wasn't always this bad. I was born a humble seed on a simple sunflower in an unremarkable field. I had a big family, seeds everywhere. We found ways of having fun. We were close. But then the petals dropped and our flower drooped. It's kind of a blur. I remember a bag. The bag says, sunflower seeds, delicious. Everything went dark. And then, then a giant. 
thought I was a goner. I thought I was done for. I screamed, I hollered, ah! but I was spit out at the last possible second. Pachoo! I flew through the air and I landed under the bleachers with a huge thud, thud. When I woke up, it was dark outside. A wad of gum had softened my fall. I felt okay, but something had changed in me. I'd become a different seed entirely. I'd become a bad seed. A bad seed. That's right, I stopped smiling. I kept to myself, I drifted. I was a friend to nobody and bad to everybody. I was lost on purpose. I lived inside a soda can. I didn't care and it suited me. Until recently, I've made a big decision. I've decided I don't want to be a bad seed anymore. I'm ready to be happy. It's hard to be good when you're so used to being bad, but I'm trying. I'm taking it one day at a time. Sure, I still forget to listen. And I still show up late. And I still talk during movies. And I do all kinds of other bad stuff. But I also say thank you. And I say please. And I smile. And I hold doors open for people. Not always, but sometimes. And even though I still feel bad sometimes, I also feel kind of good. It's sort of a mix. All I can do is keep trying and keep thinking. Maybe I'm not such a bad seed after all. Hey, look, there goes that bad seed. Actually, he's not all that bad anymore. I heard that. back says, there's a bad seed. He's not so bad. I have a couple of songs for us about washing our hands because having good hygiene is also a way to be polite. It's not all just saying please and thank you and sorry, though that is a big part of manners and being polite, but it's also covering your mouth when you sneeze or when you cough and making sure to wash your hands after you use the restroom or after you pet an animal, after you play outside, when you come home from the store or from school. This helps keep you safe and everyone around you. And that is a very polite thing to do. So let's sing a couple of songs about washing our hands. The first song we're going to sing is called Before I Eat My Meals because a very important time to wash our hands is before eating. Also, before and after handling food. So for this one, we're going to pretend we're washing our hands. Oh, before I eat my meals, I wash my hands. Wash, wash. Oh, before I eat my meals, I wash my hands. Wash, wash. Oh, it's very smart, I think, to wash those germs right down the sink. Oh, before I eat my meals, I wash my hands. Wash, wash. Good job. Let's sing another verse. This one isn't about hygiene, but it is a polite thing to do. We'll say, before I eat my meals, I pass the food. It's good to share, right? We can make sure everyone gets a portion. Oh, before I eat my meals, I pass the food. Oh, before I eat my meals, I pass the food. Pass, pass. Oh, it would be very rude if I didn't share the food. So before I eat my meals, I pass the food. Pass, pass. Good job. Let's sing one more song also about washing hands. It's called Tops and Bottoms. Tops and bottoms, tops and bottoms. In between, in between, scrub them all together, scrub them all together. Now they're clean, squeaky clean. Good job. Let's do that one one more time. So tops and bottoms. 
tops and bottoms, tops and bottoms, in between, in between. Scrub them all together, scrub them all together. Now we're clean, squeaky clean. Good job! Our last book is called How to Share with a Bear by Eric Pinder. And it's a story about sharing and how it can really make things a lot better. Sure, sometimes you want to do something by ourselves, and that's totally fair. But sometimes if we give sharing a chance, we realize that it can make our games and our activities all that much more fun. How to share with a bear. How to share with a bear. Hmm. One cold day. Thomas gathered some pillows and blankets and made a warm, cozy cave. The cave was too dark to read in, so Thomas went to get a flashlight. When he returned, he could hear something bump and thump and move around in the cave. Something big. Thomas peered inside. Two shy brown eyes stared back. It was a bear! Everyone knows that bears like berries, so Thomas made a trail of blueberries leading away from the cave. Then he waited. Sniff, snort, snuff. Soon enough, the bear bumbled through the hall, bustled down the stairs, and disappeared. Quick as he could, Thomas got his favorite books and rushed back to the cave. Too late. The bear was already there. Caves never stay empty for long. Bears love to scratch their backs on trees. So Thomas found his mom's wooden back scratcher, gave himself a good scratching, and then set the scratcher down outside his bedroom door. The bear shuffled out to grab it. Scritch, scrooch, scratch. Thomas crawled into his cave and started to read until a floaty tuft of bear fur tickled his nose. Achoo! He went to get a tissue. When he turned around, the bear was in the cave again. Bears love to fish in streams, so Thomas filled the sink and dropped in some bath toys. Splish, splash, splink. The bear came running. Thomas barely got comfortable in his cave before he heard a new noise. Gurgle, burgle, plink. The bear must have turned the water back on. Thomas went to shut the faucet off. The bear passed him in the hall. Bears like honey. So Thomas set out a bowl of honey oat cereal in the kitchen. He put on his honeybee costume and said, bzzz, as loud as he could. Then he dashed away, flapping his arms, leading the bear downstairs. The bear smelled the honey and stopped to gobble up the cereal. While Thomas hurried to his cave, at last he could read. That's when the bear came back. When he saw Thomas in the cave, he tried to snuggle in next to him, but the cave was too small. The bear started to cry. Thomas felt sad for tricking the bear. You can read too, he told him. Come and look. Thomas tried to make more room by pushing out the walls. Cave in. Thomas poked his head out. The bear giggled. Thomas grinned. Let's build a bigger cave, he said. We can share. Thomas huddled with the bear in their big new cave. They shared a bowl of blueberries. They shared a good book. And Thomas learned that bears like one thing even more than fish or blueberries or honey. They like their big brothers. The end. And here's a little 
And here's some instructions on how to build a cave. Number one, gather all the pillows and cushions and blankets you can, bring them to the site of your cave. Number two, use the largest pillows and cushions to construct your walls. Lean them against one another. Use smaller pillows as inside support. Number three, use the blankets and lighter pillows to make your roof. Number four, enjoy your cave. For our next song, I'm going to use a scarf. Maybe you have scarves like this at home, in which case you can go and grab it if you want to use a scarf along with me. But if you don't and you still want to use something to act out the movements, there's lots of different things you can use. You can use a little hand towel, a dish towel. You can ask one of your parents or an older sibling or somebody to get you a dish towel. You could use maybe um, a dirty t-shirt in the laundry. You have a one you can grab, throw it back in when you're done. Maybe you can use a neck scarf. Maybe you have one of those lying around or a handkerchief or a bandana. I'm sure you can find something that you can use for a scarf for this next little song. And for this one, I'm going to stand up, but you don't have to. I'm just going to do it for the fun of it so that you can see the movements a little better. This song is called Taking Turns. And first we're going to swing our scarf back and forth like we're playing on a swing, like it's the swing. And at the end, when we say, off it, I will hop, we can throw our scarves up in the air. And if you're standing, you can jump and throw it, okay? So we'll start by swinging. Back and forth, back and forth, on the swings I go. This is how I take my turn, swinging fast and swinging slow. Back and forth, back and forth, I think I better stop. Now it's time to share this toy, so off it I will hop. Woo, good job. Let's do one more verse, and this time we are going to bounce up and down. Up and down, up and down, on the bouncing horse I go. This is how I take my turn, going fast and going slow. Up and down, up and down, I think I better stop. Now it's time to share this toy, so off it I will hop. Whoop. Good job. For our last song, why don't we sing the more we get together. Let's go over the hand movements again. Let's go over the hand movements in case you don't remember them. And then we will sing the song together. So, it goes, the more we get together, together, together. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. Because your friends are my friends, and my friends are your friends. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. Let's try it. The more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be. Because your friends are my friends, and my friends are your friends. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. Why don't we sing, the more we play together, the happier we'll be. Let's try. The more we play together, 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 the more we play together, the happier we'll be. Because your friends are my friends, and my friends are your friends. The more we play together, the happier we'll be. Good job! Let's do one more verse. Let's sing, the more we share together. 
The more we share together, 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 the more we share together, the happier we'll be. Cause your friends are my friends, and my friends are your friends. The more we share together, the happier we'll be. Good job. That's it for story time today, friends. Thank you for joining me. I had a lot of fun. I hope that you did too. Remember, all of these books are available here at the library, so you can go online or you can give us a call or come in to reserve or check out the books. I'm gonna list two emails today in the description. Um, you can use either of them if you wanna email me directly or you wanna email the Kent Room to get on our email list so you can keep up to date with all of the changes going on with story times. Things are changing quite a bit as we try to find the best way to provide story times for you guys during all of this. So the best way for you to stay in touch is to get on that email list. So please send us an email at one of those email addresses. And you can always visit us on our website, our Facebook, our Instagram. All of those are linked in the description. I do have an at-home activity for us to do, but first let's sing goodbye. We are going to wave and we are going to clap. We wave goodbye like this. We wave goodbye like this. We clap our hands for all our friends and wave goodbye like this. Goodbye, friends. Today's activity is a good manners tree. For this craft, we will need a green piece of paper, a brown piece of paper, a pencil, some scissors, and glue, and finally, something to color with. So first step, we are going to take our brown piece of paper and either on our own or with an adult or someone else's help, we are going to trace our hand using the pencil. You wanna make sure to get a little bit of your wrist in there too. This is gonna be our tree trunk and branches. Once we've got that, we are going to go ahead and cut it out. Now that that's cut out, we want to use the green paper to make our tree's leaves. So I just traced what kind of looks like a big fluffy cloud on the green here. And I'm going to go ahead and cut that out. Um, you can make it look like whatever you want. Maybe you want to get a little more detailed than I did. It's up to you. Okay, so now I'm just going to glue my handprint tree trunk onto my tree like that. So now I'm just going to write something that's good manners on each of the five branches. So maybe the words thank you or please, I'm sorry, excuse me. See what you can come up with. Think about it or talk with an adult or a friend or a sibling about what you think are good manners and write those down. I encourage you to try to write it yourself if you're at that level or write the first letter of each word. Or if you're not quite there yet, ask somebody else to write them for you. And maybe you wanna try tracing them with a marker. Thank you friends, have fun.